Well, hello, 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 everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Blessings to you. Shout out to all my lows. And then I just want to talk about continuing to deal with CTE. Um, right now, I'm in a big project in my life. I'm doing a, a renovation on my home. It was actually in really bad, bad shape. I'd rented it out, and it got... It got... It got messed up pretty bad, so really more money than I have to fix the repairs but I'm working on it and I've been working on renovating for I don't know about six weeks and I still have months to go there's so much work to do but during that time I've broken my routine in my first video I talked about CTE I said one of the great ways that I've learned to deal with it is establishing a routine having patterns when I do that I can fall into things and then I tend to uh, function better I'm pretty normal for the most part, unless it's real late at night. When it starts getting late at night, I get a little squirrely. I start um, doing and saying things that I usually wouldn't. I'm very impulsive. And um, I get dementia the later up, later it goes. And uh, anyway, that root, breaking that routine it's been real difficult for me. It, cost, it causes me to fall out of place and I get real confused. I don't know how to or what to do. Um, I know recently I stopped. I've been forgetting to take my medication. I haven't been sleeping. I haven't been eating. I haven't been taking care of myself at all and it, tell, and it shows. Uh, a lot of my, my issues have uh, gotten really bad breaking this routine and not doing those daily things that I need to do. You know, the difficulty is in life is that if I have a routine or, you know, we could, I could function pretty well. But once you get out of that, you flounder, you struggle, and you kind of lose yourself a little bit. Sometimes you're not yourself. You just, you are somebody else. You're, you're not in the driver's seat. You're on autopilot and somebody else is driving, a person that you don't exactly recognize. He has semblances of you. A lot of what happens to me is kind of revert back to how I was when I was real young growing up. Um, I was kind of a bad kid. I was kind of a thug. Well, I wasn't kind of. I was. And, uh, you know, I'm a, to be honest, I'm a straight up OG. But, you know, that's not something that I've really been active in for 20 years. You know, I'm, a, I'm 40 years old now. But my mind and my my mentality keeps reverting back to that more and more and more. Uh, the more that I'm out of my routine, and uh, the more that I'm away from the people that influence me, like church and uh, my my therapies daily. I've been missing all that stuff, and it makes things pretty wild. I start sharing and doing crazy things, and it just freaks people out. People want nothing to do with you. Uh, you having severe mood swings. On complete, like manias and paranoia and psychosis. I mean, all sorts of stuff can happen. The problem is, you know, it's going to take me a while to, or, and I'm, it's going to take me help to get back in that routine so I can get back to kind of like a normal life again. But in the meantime, I still have to get this work done and I have to figure out how to move forward in life and pretty troubling. I don't know how to make my next move, how I'm going to get from point A to point B. I don't, I have no idea how that's going to happen. And I'm scared. It's scary when you realize that you really have a problem you can't solve. It's not fixable. You can manage it to some degree, but it's going to get worse. And that's the hard reality that I live with. It's a very lonely and isolating place. Very people will ever understand or care. And a lot of people will judge you. You know, it's really sad to be some of the things I do sometimes. I made a really disgusting comment to somebody the other day online that I would never usually make. It was late at night. 
hadn't been eating, hadn't taken my medication. Next thing you know, I'm saying really ugly things to people. I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? And then I just got to deal with it. People were like, you're such a jerk, you're such a creep, and saying all these things about me, which aren't true. That's not how I am. But yet, I got to deal with what people think about me. Because sometimes I do things I wouldn't you'll normally do. It's scary. You wonder what's next. What hair am I going to trip off? Some days I'm scared I'm going to end up in prison or some kind of home or a funny farm. And I can't help it. I didn't make a moral choice. I got knocked in the head too many times. At what point do I get that I'm no longer functional at all? How many years do I have? Five years? Ten years? Twenty years? Sometimes I deal with, like, my, my right now, like, over the last few years, I've had problems with, like, controlling some functions, like bladder and stuff, like, not being able to, to hold it at all. When I have to go, I have to go right then. I mean, no ability at all. I mean, just things are getting more difficult. And the more difficult it gets, the more desperate I feel. I know this isn't a fun video, and I doubt anybody even watches this, but I had to share. I have to put it out there so somebody can understand what people with brain trauma are living with. I'm not hiding what I'm going through. I feel that if I share openly and honestly, you know, it keeps me going. I don't care what other people think. I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to get by, and that's what I have to do in order to get by. I can't keep this stuff inside. I have to get it out somewhere, and whether people want to hear it or not, I'm going to sell it because I have to. Because I'm trying to, I'm trying to stay alive. I've gotten to points before where I just wanted to give up and die, and I've tried. I don't want to be back to that point. I want to live. I've got a daughter to take care of. I've got people that love me. I've got to keep pushing. So be annoyed by me, freaked out by me, love me or hate me. Hopefully you can understand me. And there's, I just want to say there's a lot of veterans out there with a lot of problems just like I have. A lot of guys have had TBIs. There's tons of us, man. There's a lot of guys that uh, have other array of issues. And 22 of us a day shoot ourselves or kill ourselves in some manner. You know, I'm making this video today, so I'm not one of the 22. And uh, I hope that somebody maybe cares enough to find a veteran around them that's disabled and having a bunch of issues and just show them that that you care about them to some degree. Don't just say thank you for your service. We don't even care. That gets on our nerves. A lot of us don't even like hearing that. It's so trite. You don't even know what we did. You don't know what we've gone through and you don't care what we're going through now telling us that. Just show, just show that you have enough interest that have, at least be curious about something. Ask him what he did in the military. Ask him if he enjoyed the military. Something that makes him feel human. Like there's a personal connection. And like... He's a person, because a lot of us don't feel like people. All we feel like is, is a ball of problems and difficulties and burden on people. And we feel like we're losing our dignity. These issues we can't control, it's, getting, it's gotten stolen from us in so many ways, and we just fight to get it back. Anyway, that's my video for the day. Don't know what else to share. I just had to share this with somebody. I'm sure as I go along and I have CTE issues, I'll share what's going on so that y'all have an understanding. Have a good day and God bless each one of you. Bye.